Welcome to another live stream. Hope you guys are excited and motivated to learn some new, or to improve your technique, maybe learn some new exercises, and just in general, get in better shape, get a little more fit, develop some strength in the skating muscles, so you can skate faster at the end. Might not skate faster tomorrow, but it's money in the bank for what hopefully will become a season next year. Um, there's still a minute before we actually go live. I mean, I am live, but before the scheduled live stream, so I'm not gonna tell anything too important or too crucial for this workout before everybody tuned in. Let me know when you're here, check in, and um, let's see how many nationalities we can get in this live stream. Uh, I made that little challenge for myself and for you guys, I guess, even more for you guys, actually, that during every live stream, we try and get more skating nations on board with this. And so far, our PB, personal best, is 37 different countries, which is pretty impressive. Um, so let's see if we can, we can beat that today. I am Victor from Denmark, streaming live from my garage in the United States of America in Utah, where it's freezing today. Uh, so all those that were jealous when I did the live streams with Sofia in the spring and in the summer from Portugal where it's just warm and sunny. Well, this is uh, karma. So right now it's about zero degrees Celsius in this garage, uh, hence long sleeves and long tights. Okay, seems like we're getting more and more people with us. Um, we should go a little back so I don't have to hold this. Um, yeah, welcome to everybody here. Venezuela, that's that's one I haven't seen before. Hola, como estas? No hablo espanol, but I'm glad to have you here. Um, today's session, uh, first off I want to say if you have any questions throughout the entire session, the entire live stream, just ask because this is a technical session. For me, for you, it's not going to be an all out thing. It's not going to ruin our legs for tomorrow it's still gonna hurt and we're gonna feel it we're gonna get hopefully the body temperature up a little so we're not cold at least um but the goal of this is really to perform the exercises correctly and what i hope to do is to share some tips and tricks and uh, just dial everybody in so we have a better idea of how to actually skate and how to do these at, at home um hey pedro thanks for checking in from colombia maybe or spain um, so in today's workout, we are going to go through 10 exercises. However, we're only going to do every exercise one single time. So it's not that difficult. We're going to do the exercises for a minute and a half for each exercise. So in total, it's going to be 15 minutes of active work, uh, which is not too bad for a dry line. We've done sessions earlier on where we had half an hour, 45 minutes of skating position. So it should really be okay, and I'm pretty sure we can all get through it. If it's too hard, if you feel like you're not technically uh, on point, then just take more rests, because this is, again, I can't say too often today, uh, that it's a technical session. So today we put the things together so it look really nice, and that's what we want to try and keep when we go for those really hard sessions, and obviously when we're out skating later on. Um, so again, don't hesitate if you have any questions or whether it's about things I show in this video or just skating in general, today is the day where we will have time to look into it and I'll be here to explain. Uh, there's no uh, set, like there's no decided set rest because this is not meant to be intervals or it's not meant to be a challenging workout physically speaking. So it's more important that we just get the rest we need so we can execute the exercises the way they're supposed to be executed. So 10 exercises, a minute and a half each, and whatever rest we need. So that's the time for us to shake the legs and the time for us to get, get ready for uh, another exercise. Oof, I do not speak Spanish, I'm sorry about that. I can't, I can't help out here. Um, it's one of my weaknesses, I should, I should definitely get, uh, yeah, get myself motivated to learn some Spanish, which is really hard. Um, I know skating is big in a lot of Spanish-speaking countries, so maybe I should try and develop, but uh, I'm not going to be able to make it throughout this live stream. The exercises start out with the most simple exercises, um, the easiest, I would say, movements. 
And then at the end of it, we're gonna do something a little more challenging, but um, I'm gonna explain every exercise and I'm pretty sure we can all get through it uh, in a good way together. Um, I do wanna, just before we get started, promote the super chat function. Um, if you enjoy the content I make, live streams and videos here on YouTube, or if you just wanna support me as a skater in my career, um, I'm right now preparing for my next Olympics 2022, if everything goes well with the whole COVID. Um, so if you do want to support, you can click on that button that says Super Chat, it's like a dollar sign, and you can actually donate any amount you like. Um, this is also going to highlight any comment, or if you donate a sticker, um, it's going to highlight that so it's going to stay on the screen for longer, so I'll definitely see those comments that are Super Chat comments, and that is just really appreciated, so if you want to donate anything, I'll, I'll gladly. Um, take it but you can do that throughout the entire thing just click on the dollar sign and also i'm going to launch myself out there in the really near future as an online coach so if you want to get even more help with your specific training um, i do personal coaching from now on so you can contact me in the email address i wrote in the beginning of the live chat uh, victor.tharp at gmail.com and I'll come back to you and we can have a talk about how we can get you on track, whether it's meal plans, diet, getting a little more leaner or build more muscle or just skate faster. Um, I could be a part of that journey. I do have a degree when it comes or in health and nutrition and then a lifetime of experience, experience as, a, as a skater, many years in, in pro skating. So I'd love to be able to share some of that with you guys and help you towards your goals. Uh, I feel like I'm a self-taught self -taught expert in motivation and, and I also do have the, uh, the educational background in health and nutrition. So I'd be glad to help anybody out. But for now, let's get going with this live stream. Hey G, good to see you. Sorry this is late for Europeans, but I had a long practice this morning and this was the earliest I could make it back to my garage and back to my Wi-Fi. So that's how it is. But good thing about live streams, they all get uploaded. So you can just watch this whenever you feel like it. Maybe you are watching it whenever you felt like it, whenever your legs felt like it. So let's get started. 10 exercises, a minute and a half for each exercise. And I'm gonna explain them first, show them first, and then we get down to business. See if I can, oh, like that, maybe even further down. Yeah, if you feel like it, give me some feedback on the video angle um, about this program. It's great, give yourself that, ah, oh, thanks. Yeah, that's a really good point, G's got there. Not that I make awesome programs, but I obviously do. But instead of spending all that money right now on Black Friday or things you don't really need for Christmas, give yourself the gift of being in good shape. First exercise I'm gonna do is just classic skating up downs. Um, super simple, but again, the basics is incredibly important when it comes to skating. And if you wanna be good, you need to have these perfectly fixed. So to do up downs, it's really just extending and going down but in a perfect skating position. So when you're down, you want to reach 90 degrees so you can fit a fist in here, rest your elbows here, touch your heels, touch your toes, and that's what you do. The upper body stays immobile, no movement there, it's just the legs. Make sure everything points forward, don't get shaky with your knees, they should also be steady. Have a shoulder width, so take your fist, both of them, put them in between your knees, and then you got your position. And make sure it doesn't go like this when you go up and down. So do it at your own pace. Uh, so I'm not gonna be counting pace here. Uh, we're just gonna do it together for a minute and a half. Oh, nice Petro. Garage is great, right? I mean, I put you guys above my car. It's out there freezing, but we're in it. Okay, so if you're all ready, I'm just gonna start the clock in 10 seconds. And then we're gonna do the first minute and a half of up down. I'll try and show some from the front, some from the side. Um, but three, two, one, here we go. So again, the pace here is just whatever you're comfortable with. If you can do it really fast, you can do that. But there's so many things to say into account when you and I can't do fast, because you also want to make sure that your body weight doesn't go 
too much back and too far, or too far back and too far out front. So you should have the body weight, the center of gravity right in the middle. So feel in the middle of your shoes, not in front, not rear. Same goes for inner, outer. Don't go like that. Straight up. Relax everything that you don't use. There's no reason to be upwardly, overly tense or have it too straight back. Let your hip follow the spine. Just chill as much as you can. Direct the energy you got into what you actually need for pushing. There's a minute. Fifteen to go. It's not too bad. And that was a minute and a half. Solid. We're going. Got a lot of viewers, almost 20 people with us live. I live in a garage, whoa. That is tough. I'm, I'm, I'm not actually living down here. I mean, I do spend a ton of time on the trainer, um, but I do have a real bed upstairs. Uh, not that badass. Okay, solid job. So if everybody got that right, we're gonna try and maintain what we just did here, the same position, but now it's in one leg. So, even though it's the same, it's the same thing, it is gonna be a little more challenging because there's some new things we're gonna be aware of and some mistakes that are easier to make when we only have one leg. And the first of those is being wobbly. It's a lot easier to get wobbly when you don't have two knees or two legs to stabilize. So, really slow down the speed if necessary. So you're not like too shaky. Just slow it down to whatever pace feels correct for you. Another thing that's easier to mess up for some reason is the other body. It's a lot easier to fly around with it. So keep that in position. Be tense, be compact in your core. Just like we did before, because you don't want to mess that up now. The other thing that here becomes a potential problem is the recovery leg. So the leg we're not using as a support that can fly around all places and what you want to do is you want to have it relaxed but in a position where it's not pulling you out of a position so this leg the support leg in the air should be pointing forward because at some point if you're out skating you put it down and skate onto it so if it's just like this you can't skate onto it if it's just like this you can't skate onto it so everything should point down and forward, point forwards this all time so don't open up on your hip because that's the number one mistake. It's going to get you out of position. And as we all know, if you want to go fast, you're going to push straight to the side. So if you do like this, it's going to be very hard to push straight to the side. You're already steering away from your center of gravity. So everything points forward. And as you made bigger, if this is perfectly relaxed, it's just going to fall down in this natural position. Or when you're down, it's just hanging there. So for this one, instead of doing 45, 45, we're just going to do 22 and a half, 22 and a half, 22 and a half, 22 and a half. That's very uh, precise, but I'll, I'll keep track of the time. So all you're going to do is just switch legs whenever I say switch. Okay. Is there any questions for the single leg up down exercise? Um, I would say that could be a good idea to use the resistant bands. Not right now, because uh, now we're just gonna get the feel of it. But if it's something, if you struggle with knees falling too far to the inside, I would definitely, at least as a warm up exercise, try and put elastic bands around my knees. So you're really activating the sides of your glutes, the medius, uh, gluteus medius, to try and get your knees out, or at least hold them in the right position. But for now, just do it like this. I'll show the first set with the front towards you guys and then the other from the side. So if you're ready, we're gonna start in five seconds. Let's do it. Let's go. And again, I'm gonna tell you whenever we're gonna switch.
and switch leg. If you want to practice your arm swing, feel free to use it. I'm going this. Keep it all relaxed. Especially your shoulders. Don't get too mechanical or tense. Let it flow. And we switch. So it was two out of ten, not too bad, right? <laughs> Next exercise is called the weight transfer drill or exercise. Um, what makes you skate fast is that you're throwing your body weight from side to side and generating speed when pushing into the ground. So the more smooth smoothly you can execute that body weight transfer, the more free speed and the more you can save your legs. So for weight transfer we go down, every single exercise I start with a skating position, so go down there, extend, and then you're just going to drive it from side to side, feeling how the body weight pressure goes from one leg to the other. So once you're all the way to one side, you'll be able to lift this off the ground because everything is like carrying this uh, the working leg. Is that, did we all get that? If not, ask along. Um, if you're ready, we can go ahead and start. We're gonna go over a minute and a half again. Sit low, 90 degrees, knee angle. Let's start in three, two, one. Get down there, smoothly transfer to the side. You want to be a little out here so you really get that lean. So you're not standing just in the middle. Get all the way over to that leg. You don't have to lift it, or you should be able to. Don't go up and down. Knees should not move vertically. Your entire body should not move vertically. Ooh, 20 live viewers, keep them coming. We got a question here from Kay Karn. Be sorry I'm not along in the garage to do training only to Well, you should get down to your garage. No, it's fair. If this is a bad time of the day for you guys, um, I still think you can benefit a lot from just watching and listening and, or even asking questions that you were wondering. That's a big part of it. I mean, I get something out of explaining this because every time I explain to you guys, I kind of remind myself what actually, um, 
what it actually takes to do these exercises correctly. So I think it's, you can get the same benefit from just listening and picking it up and then thinking it through, watching the movements, visualizing it, how you would, you would perform them. Um, some advice for lower back pain when I'm skating long time. 53 years, but likes to skate. Yes, lower back pain. I have really good advice for that. Um, actually, I had a lot of issues with that, um, both on inlines and ice skates. Uh, on inlines, I stick over really long skates. If I skate for hours at the time, solo especially, uh, where you can't really stretch your back that well. And on ice, because I didn't grow up ice skating, I, uh, I picked it up when I was 18, so seven, eight, seven, eight years ago. Um, so I'm very tense because it's just not my natural environment. So I'm always a little more tense, uh, especially in the beginning of the season. So one thing that I found to be really great, other than just training, uh, doing back, back strength exercises, is uh, for inline skating, find some softer wheels because there's going to be less vibration, so you won't feel them as much. Uh, that's a great thing. Another thing is probably the one I found to be the most useful is getting your center of gravity and your whole like, hip structure further out forward. So if you're skating like this, it takes a lot of strength right here. You can even feel like my muscles are tense right now just to hold it up. This is almost like doing uh, a back raises. However, if you do it like this, I'm not using my neck at all. This is a saturated enough where you're not going to skate like this. But just having the hips further down, trying to contract the butt, so with the butt a little <laughs> to get it further forward, think about your uh, belly button being out towards your toes, then you can get a more round back, and you can also activate your glutes more, and it's easier to push straight to the side than if you're already like this, a lot easier to skate, uh, terribly. Um, so yeah, get the body weight further out front, that's been working for me, softer wheels, and just, uh, yeah, sh training your back, um, doing back races, planks and all that stuff. Um, how can you avoid the turn of the hips? Ooh. That's a good question and it's a very common mistake that, so that's what I explained with the, the, the single leg off downs. a lot of people do like this and then they skate like this, which is also a mistake I, I do when I'm tired. Um, what I wanted to do is everything basically that uses the side of the hip, we're gonna play some of the exercises later on today, um, but the circles will strengthen this part and it's also, every time you move this out, you're going to do like that. So being able to withstand that using the side of your butt, so when this goes out, you're not going to collapse like that, that is just going to strengthen your ear and the more stronger your ear in the sides, the better you would be at like holding it, holding, compressing this, keeping this together when you move to the side instead of being looser and letting it drop. So it's gonna be better keeping this, keeping that, keeping this. Sometimes you can even, that's the way I fix it for myself. I think of delaying the upper part of my body um, because I'm just doing it too early, falling too fast on the side, and then you're not skating onto the skate, you're just falling onto it, falling onto it, which makes no speed and it's really hard for the legs. Um, tight shoulders. Honestly, I just think of, um, that's also a thing I have uh, in my turns. You also see a lot of ice skaters going like this with this arm, um, just for no reason being tense. Um, so I really think of just letting it hang there. Sometimes I even practice with like a little loose, which I think is better if you do this than being overly like tense. Um, but I think there's really no other way than just skating a lot and thinking about it. It's a thing that most people can fix right away. Uh, it's just not a natural thing to do, so they go like this, and then if a coach tells them, yo, relax your shoulders, oh yeah. Uh, so the thing about, again, if you get the center of gravity further out and stuff like that, but under you, everything else is going to stay in position. So you can control more with your core, because it's more rounded, and then you don't really need that upper body to try and balance it, and uh, it's going to gonna relax your shoulders. Um, the next exercise, there's actually one exercise that's really good for this whole hip thing. It's, it's uh, simplified, the skating movement simplified. It's my personal favorite, I think. Definitely the exercise I spent the most time doing is the kill zone. So again, down into skating position, and then instead of doing imitations, you're just doing super small from side to side. We're really practicing holding this, holding this, instead of like 
Bowling. Bowling. Try to hold it. Hold. Hold. All right. We should do that for a minute and a half. We can start at 10. Five, three, two, one. So make sure you sit down on the hips and just feel that pressure. Ugh. Maybe you put a little more weight at the end of the push on the outside of your shoes. You feel that compressing in the side here and on the side of your shoes. So you're not twisting, but you're just sitting in the hips. How did that go? So again, this is also an exercise where it's a hard thing about being so tense in your legs and then so relaxed in your upper body. Um, it's a really fine balance. Um, but I mean, the more you can relax, the better blood flow and the less fatigue you're gonna accumulate through a race or a practice. Um, so just safe whatever you can safe. How to feel if I'm using my body weight? Well, then you shouldn't feel like actually extending, even though you do extend your legs. If you're really using your body weight correctly, it shouldn't feel like a, a very muscular thing to be, be skating. Um, just feel like a continuous flow from side to side, where it's not, it's not that big a difference from stepping and rolling. So you should all, like even when you're rolling, you should still feel the speed generating and not so much. So it should be more of a continuous movement when you're using your body weight. It's not gonna be as push, push, push is gonna be more floating because you manage to kind of reuse the power and the momentum of the previous push going into the next push, which is gonna save you for a whole lot of muscle work. Um, Actually, the next exercise is really good for that. It's the up, when we're up, we're, we're gonna generate even more force and power than we naturally have, and throw that to the side, which would, on skates, be trans transformed into the side. So this is a way where you can, you feel this going as one single movement down and over, then you're probably using your body weight correctly and using it to generate speed. So we're going from up, down, over, up, down, over, up, uh, continues for a minute and a half. Start in 10 seconds, guys. Again, the slower you can do this and the more of a smooth movement at the same pace, the better. Three, two, one. So down, and over. Also, very common mistake here is to let this knee collapse. If you want to make sure this is perfectly straight so you don't fall too early to the side. Using this down and then to the side. One movement, but wait until you're down here and then push from the hip. All these exercises should really hurt your body if you do them correctly.
four seconds. Have any questions coming in for that one? Uh, if not, next exercise is possibly my own favorite because uh, it's so simple, but it's still very difficult to do correctly, and it really fixes some very common problems amongst all skaters, beginners as well as world champions, um, which is. Kind of the thing I mentioned is the way to solve back issues or the way to do a proper double push or the way to just use your body weight. One thing that goes for all of those, and I think you hear a lot of good skaters um, bring this up as the, possibly the most important thing in skating, is really keeping this hip core area solid. Um, so the next one is baby steps, which is whatever, <laughs> what the name we hate. You're down in position and then you do a small step forward. This is simple, but it is so hard to do this, like leaving this leg a little behind without tilting forward. So what this helps us do and what this really emphasizes is that whenever we push, instead of tilting it, we really push to the side using the glutes. And that way, again, we're not going to twist because we're using the butt and not the legs to kick off. Um, so the baby steps, all you want to really do here is make sure this is so perfectly fixated, the hips, that when you do this, you're not going to do that. This stays the same all the time. Otherwise, when you push, you're just going to lose your butt backwards. Did everybody get that? Okay, well let's get to it. Baby steps. I will do, just as before, I'll show it from the side, from the front. Um, you do want to get a little distance from the camera or the wall or whatever is in front of you. Because, uh, as I said, it's steps, so you will step a little forward all the time. But really drive this. So not step forward, but skate forward. Um, by using that body weight, throwing yourself forward. I think it's fine to mirror always to move like you're my mirror image. It's over for me. That makes sense. Just really trying to visualize yourself, have these key points, and then either in front of the mirror or trying to use me as your mirror, trying to imitate what I do. Um, and then, yeah, it takes a lot of time to do it perfectly, and especially to do it when you're tired before you start out now, this way. We're going three seconds, minute and a half again. Let's go. Down in position, and then these two. Again, the slower, the more relaxed, the better. But you can see I'm not really reaching out with the foot. I'm reaching out with my whole center of gravity to this hip thing from walking forward. Hope that made sense to you guys. That was nice to see we got more and more people checking in. 
Again, Venezuela. That's cool, new country for me. Um, awesome. Uh, I wonder where everybody else is from. Uh, I know this is late for Europe. Could be late for Asians or really early for Asians um, or for Asia. So um, maybe this is more for Americans, a good lunch break thing. Uh, but I hope that we can have a little bit of everything here <laughs> to make it international. That's pretty cool. Next up, we got, so now there's people asking how to keep the knee straight and how to not lose the hip when we're pushing, lose it backwards or open up. Belgium, ooh, nice, that's cool. Thanks for staying up or staying active. Um, is the extension taps. So the first exercise, we're gonna have three of these, um, I'm sorry, two of these exercises where we're really engaging the, the side of the glute. Um, the first one is just activating it, so it's not that technical. And the second one is going to be very seating related. Um, getting warm. Utah represent. Trying to support the local basketball team. I don't know much about basketball. I don't even know if they're playing, so I bought it because it was on sale. What can I do? Still makes me fit in. Um, so the first one is just extension taps. And these are some really good exercises that all the people doing desk point skating should do way more often, just do naturally, and not having to force it, keep the knee straight. Even though most people do it all the way when they're standing on it, at the end of the push, a lot of people do this, and then again, we're gonna twist. So keep these legs straight. There's no reason to ever have the knee anywhere else than between hip and feet. So these exercises are gonna help us activate the side of the glutes, which is basically what does this. Um, so whenever we feel like naturally doing this, we compensate by opening up and engaging these muscles. How we're gonna do that? We're gonna go down to position, 90 degree, go to the side, lift up, down, up, down, up. We're gonna do five each side, squeeze the leg, and it's just a minute and a half, you know the drill. If there's any questions to that, Привет, Руси. Меня зовут Виктор. Как дела? Я говорит не хорошо русский. I don't speak a lot of Russian, so, but I'm glad you tuned in. That's gonna be super late for Russia. Um, I just said goodnight to my girlfriend Sofia, and it was pretty late. So, cheers for uh, staying with us. That's cool. Uh, hats off. Okay, let's get to it. Let's get the bot on fire. So we're gonna start in ten seconds. Every exercise starts by finding that position. So when you're in position, side, lift up. If you do this perfectly, you will use nothing but this muscle. And you'll also move nothing with this leg. So no doing this, no doing this. Keep this perfectly in the same position while this is working. You can go down all the way and touch, touch the floor so you know you're like relaxing. Engaging, contracting. Also, do a move up and down, only this part of the Especially when I'm not here, do them in front of a mirror to auto-correct yourself. Uh, it often, I know this myself, often you have a different image of how it looks when you're doing something than how it actually looks. And uh, I mean, every time somebody records me skating, I'm like, oh, I 
thought it was a lot lower than that. Uh, so it's just a good way to not fool yourself and, and get things done correctly right off the first time. Um, so yeah, we go from one booty pain to another. And the next one is where we make this a little more skating related. So we're gonna do circles. Um, so what we do on skates, we push to the side and then make a smooth recovery. So as a kid, I was taught this by my coaches as the McDonald's move, because you're basically drawing an M as McDonald's, because all the kids like that. Um, so push straight to the side, and then a smooth circle. So again, this is where it becomes difficult, because as soon as you move something backwards, you try and compensate by moving, rocking something forward. So this is where you gotta stay solid, just push straight to the side, let it come back here without tilting or moving anything. So try to only move whatever is supposed to move here. Do we have a question on that? I point sometime a camera to me. Yeah, you can try and record yourself again. That's a really good advice. Um, I do that basically every day. Just trying to fix what I'm doing on my skates. Um, it's a nice way to, yeah, again, correct yourself, give yourself some feedback. And just constantly be aware of what you're gonna do to skate faster to improve. Um, so circles is next. So we should start in 15 seconds if you're all ready for that. Straight to the side and then circle. We're gonna do three on each leg and then switch for a minute and a half. It's a little less than before. Should be easier. Now we're warming up. Let's go in two, one, down, 90 degree. Straight to the side. Smooth, beautiful circle. And everything else, this stays the same. The weight transfer stays the same. Everything you're doing with the upper body that prevents you from pushing straight to the side and keeping everything pointing forward is just gonna make you lose speed instead of either generate or maintain. And transfer. Trying to be smooth, it's not fast or slow. Just same speed all the way through. Forty seconds to go. This is not a physically hard workout, but it does take a lot of capacity, mental capacity to do it all correctly. And even though we're not collapsing or out of breath, there's some muscle groups that are gonna get seriously challenged, especially if you're not used to engaging those muscle groups. Uh, but that's good, that means you're changing something. And yeah, doing something different than usual. It's a way to create better habits for your technique or for your skating. We got two more exercises. These two are going to be a little more, I'm not going to say snappy, but dynamic, which is good. Uh, I mean, on skates, every movement is way faster than what we're doing here. Nobody skates to this slow rhythm, but I mean, that makes sense because we want to slow down and do everything perfect, or at least try and get there. Um, so the last one or the second last exercise is skate hops. So that's like skate jumps, but less exhausting, I would say. Um, so for this, like I don't know if you mention it every time, but you go down in the nice position, and then here's tiny hops. This is just practicing and catching it in the right position and really getting it as like training that muscle memory of as soon as you land from the leg. You don't have to find balance, you don't have to find position, you just land and in a super solid position, so there's no effort or no wasted time before you land. Whoa. And then have to find it in order to generate the next push. So the 
less of an effort you have being ready for a new push or the land, the easier it gets and the more carryover you can have. You don't have to do it as explosive or intense as I just did there. there. Uh, no reason for that because we just want to land low and jump from a low position. So generate force, even though we're not going hard, generate that force right from the bottom. In that position, you already start pushing, so it's not gonna be a desperate push at the end of it. Just one smooth build, and you land. You don't land up here. You land in that position, so you're ready for another one. So land in the low position and build force and power from that low position in the next jump. It doesn't have to be a lot of power, it's just create that habit of, as soon as you're on that leg, kind of start preparing for the next push and putting at least some body weight into that push. Um, so you're gonna do it for a minute and a half. You know the drill, start at 10. Just tiny hops, anything that just gives you a tiny bit of air time is definitely okay. So keep it chill, but land low and generate force from that low position. One, two, three. So you can see I almost don't jump. But when I land, I land not up here, I land down here. So there's a good chance that a lot of you is now we're suddenly jumping. And then it comes more of an intense workout exercise here. A lot of you are going to get your shoulders up here. So remember, the reason you're not out of, out of position with the elbow body is because your core keeps it in place and because your hips are perfectly solid and under you. So just relax those shoulders. We're still keeping up. Impressed to see more and more people joining. I mean, you could expect the opposite, and then people get tired, and that's cool. We haven't got a lot of quitters. We've got more people coming in. So I want to do it um, more than 20 people live. That's sweet. I hope you can use these uh, advice, but this advice uh, it took me a long time <laughs> to figure out a lot of this. I'm still. Yo, Chicago, what's up there? How's it going? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining. Uh, you got here just in time for the final exercise. <laughs> uh, we'll do some, oh, that's a good question. Uh, so you wanna land flat on the toes. You do see a lot of sprinters, especially that when accelerating, they kind of land either on the toes or a little in the back. Hey, Kuba, hey, Danny, thanks for tuning in as well. So many people joining, that's super nice. Um, but you do want to try and land on a flat foot because ideally you want the body weight to be right in the middle of your skate uh, And that's very difficult if you land on your toes. And I do know that when we're doing this on shoes It is to a lot of people because that's just the way the human body is Is, is made um, is that it's easier to jump a little more on the toes and also activate your calves a little more But when you're out skating, you just can't do that. So even though it's not optimal for dry land we gotta keep in mind that the goal of all of this is to become faster on skates. So don't cheat yourself here and, um, and try and do it as much as you can on the flat foot. Um, it's just gonna make it more, it's just gonna put it, it's gonna bridge the gap from dry land to skating. And all of these exercises are great, but the only reason we wanna get good at this is so we can skate faster. So always keep in mind that, try and even visualize how this would be on skates. Um, to kind of bridge that gap between skating and, and dry land. So flat feet, flat feet, everything pointing forward. Keep that in mind as well. The uh, 
it's cool to see more people joining. That's nice for the end of it. We we're gonna be done soon. We can do a little Q and A. We usually do that at the end, uh, just to make sure that everybody got everything right. And if there's any other questions, um, so we don't spend too much time in the middle of the workout, but uh, recap at the end of it. Um, but it's nice to have you anyways, even though we're getting close to the end. Last exercise, just a minute and a half. So stay focused, it's up here. This is gonna be a hard one, mentally, but not physically. Um, that's, I'd say that's like the key message of today. Um, this last one is outward hops. This is one I used a lot. Um, this one is really good if you're looking to improve your double push or just build up the strength it takes to actually do the double push, which is necessary. I mean, it's the technical support, but if you don't have uh, the muscle strength, to support that technique you are you want to adapt, well it's gonna be a tough, tough way. Um, so this one is kind of like yeah, like a double push pushing under, so we jump up and across the side, obviously we want to be in position. Same goes, stay low, and then it's just five small hops, switch, five small hops. So a lot of people it's very uncomfortable being on this side because you can't catch it. Especially in this case, it's why a lot of people subconsciously, but they do it, um, doesn't like to skate underneath himself, which is basically half the push, hence the double push you're missing out on. Um, so just create that habit and get the strength to not just move your legs underneath yourself, but push underneath yourself. Uh, the other thing is just outer edge, which is not really necessary if you don't push. So there's a big difference between getting on the outer edge and, and having an active, powerful double push. Um, so, yep, that's what we're gonna work on here. Outward hops, five to each side, a minute and a half, last exercise of the day. And uh, then I'll try and answer any questions there might be. Okay, so if we're all good, bang in the same position, we're starting in 10. Three, two, This is up to you. This is not how we're going to skate anyways. This is again more about balance, building strength in the position, not about being good at jumping weirdly to the side. 40 more seconds. Ooh, hope you didn't miss the last part. That was my battery saying we're about to run out. Hey, Poland. Oh, more Europeans. Thanks for staying up this late to join us for this suffer fest. We just got done though. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that was it. I really hope you enjoyed this. Now I'm gonna do like a classic street musician and be like, that's my hat. Um, if you enjoyed this, you can leave a super chat. Uh, go down in the live chat. It was a pleasure, Petro. Go down in the live chat, click on the icon with a dollar sign, and then you can add a sticker or super chat, and you can donate any amount from, I think it's like half a dollar or even less, up to whatever you feel like I deserve from spending some time teaching you guys how to skate. And uh, well, if the super chats keep coming, I promise to keep doing these, um, doing this out of my own pocket, buying my own equipment, and 
spending my spare time, which I love, um, but it's for sure, it's not for free to do this. Um, so you guys leave Super Chat. Uh, I promise to use it for better equipment and just to improve the quality of these videos um, in the future. And I mean, it's super nice. Skating is not gonna make you a billionaire, sadly. Uh, but I dedicated my whole life to it, so whatever you guys support me with is legitly, legitimately and truly appreciated. Um, so thanks, G. Gerrit Walters, super chatted uh, 2.29 euros. Uh, thanks a lot, that's really nice. I hope some of you want to follow his footsteps and help me out here on the channel. And then, uh, yeah, you can also ask questions with a super chat. That'll make me see the chat for longer. Um, so that's really nice. Thanks a lot, G. Shout out to you. Thanks for supporting. Uh, Petra says, if I come to Toledo, skate with us. I'd love to. In my off season, I'm gonna go for some training camps, organize some training camps, but um, I haven't decided where yet. So if you have any ideas, I would be super glad to hear it. Or if you wanna help me organize something, I'd love to travel to new places. Uh, especially warm places. For ice skating, we always travel to cold places because that's where there's ice. So I would love to spend my off season teaching people how to do inline skating in warm areas. Thanks, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Uh, I do also spend a lot of time practicing. I train twice a day and since the age of four or five. No worries, Corin. I'm just glad to help out. Glad to share some knowledge here. Um, I did also mention it in the beginning like the super chats. I also mentioned that I do online coaching uh, where I can help people out creating full programs and meal plans. I have a degree in health and nutrition uh, and I'm a certified dietitian. Um, so I got that besides my skating career, um, which I think is, is has given me the tools to figure out how to make good training plans and meal plans in order for people to kind of reach their goals and. And I think from now, um, all the people that I've been coaching, they've all been surprised how simple it is to make really big changes. And just the fact that you can eat whatever you want, it's just a matter of timing and quantities. And um, that's definitely, to a lot of people, it's gonna make it more, um, I think it's more easier to overcome and uh, maybe even fun. So uh, I'd love to help you out with that. If, that's something you'd be into, then you can just hit me up on the email I wrote in the beginning of the live chat and uh, I will contact you and we can figure out what's going to work for you. If there's any questions here at the end of it, before we say bye bye, I shall reply to whatever you have. I'll leave the live stream going for a few minutes and then, yeah, if you can ask along or you can take this wonderful opportunity to super chat and donate a little money then I'll make more live streams. You can also let me know when you want the next live stream. I'll try and adapt, try and listen. Um, yeah, thanks to G, who just commented here, has been one of my clients um, and athletes for actually several years. Uh, and he's made insane progress. Uh, he just mentioned he lost 20 kilos. Uh, I think that's part of it, but he also skated a ton faster. He is incredibly fit on the bike. And um, yeah, I mean, it all comes from his own motivation. I think it just helped um, activate a little um, and maybe made him believe in himself, gave him some tools, and then he did the hard work. But I mean, it just goes to show that everybody has what it takes to really get good and get fit. Thank you for the tips, really good. Helps me a lot to get better with my skates. Also, awesome, guys, thanks a lot, Manuel. Um, I'm just happy to hear that. Uh, it makes me really happy to help out. Uh, in many ways, elite sports is such a selfish thing, I feel like. Uh, you're in your own little bubble and you're always the most important person in your career. Where this is maybe a nice way to give something back to the skating community that kind of played an insane role in my life. Uh, I got all my friends from skating, my whole lifestyle is based on it. I met my girlfriend um, through skating. The reason I'm here in the US is because of skating, so I just it's cool to give something back in this way, and I'm also having a lot of fun. Uh, so, yeah, my pleasure, Juan, and uh, thanks a lot, Stanislav. Glad to have you follow. Um, I can update a little on my own skating career, is that it's been going really well. Today, I think, I honestly had the best ice skating workout of, 
yeah, at least the season made my life um, on the ice today. And she just um, technically gets got really nice and got uh, more comfortable at the lap pace. I want to skate for races. Um, so I'm looking to improve some national records and yeah, and, and do really well at the World Cups. Um, want to improve from my eighth place at the World Championships and my fifth place from or fifth place from the Olympics. I want to see if I can top that, and I feel like it's going in the right decision or right direction. So the odds are good. Um, I will be heading back to Europe in less than a week to skate a bit with my or with the Danish national team, and then rest a little at home so I can kick ass for the European Championships, the two World Cups in January. Those are going to be my season goals so that'll be fun um, yeah i just appreciate everybody that uh follows tax along and especially to g for the super chat that's awesome i appreciate that yeah and that was that was it for me i will make there'll be a lot of videos coming out on youtube i got sprint stuff plyometrics the double push tutorial which i know a lot of you are going to be excited about because uh, it's a common question and then i made a video where i put together the six most important things when you want to go from a fitness skater to a speed skater and so we put those six I say key key aspects of being a fast skater and not just a skater and then how to improve on those i spent a lot of time making that video and it's gonna have its premiere um later this week so if you haven't already subscribed to this channel because that's gonna be exciting and i spend a lot of time filming and editing so that'd be great don't uh, don't make me feel like I did that for nothing. No, I'm kidding. Um, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, everybody. I will get some lunch because it's it's definitely lunch time. I'll go for a little jog to get this out of the legs, have a hard session tomorrow. But thanks for watching. Thanks for doing this with me. I'll see you see you for the next rally. Cheers, everybody.